Okay, so we're talking about lesson two, two. Um, and like I said, we're going to talk about this one today and tomorrow. And then on Friday, remember that we do have a quiz on lessons two, one, and two, two. So what we just talked about today, and then we'll talk about today and tomorrow. And then I don't know if you looked down to, and noticed, but um, we do have to have a midterm next week. Um, there is an online practice that will, the problems will look just like what they will on the, on the midterm. So that review will be good to do. Okay, so let's start talking about this. Okay, so this lesson is using second derivatives to determine concavity. Okay, so we use first derivatives to find max and mins. We use second derivatives to find concavity. Do you have any idea what concavity might mean? Maybe in science you talked about concave or convex. Okay, so it's about how something is um, opening, basically, right? Uh, when I hear those words, I always think of those pictures in science where you learn about the eyeball. I don't know why. About how they were, I guess, concave in the back. Okay, suppose that f is a function whose derivative f prime exists at every point in some interval then f is concave up on the interval if f prime, first derivative, is increasing, it is concave down where f prime is decreasing. Um, so think about this. If you graph your first derivative and it is increasing, so remember earlier we were looking at first derivative graphs and we were having to interpret them. Um, so if that graph of the derivative is increasing, then that also gives us information about the second derivative. So graph is increasing, what does it mean about its derivative? It is what? If a graph is in, <clears throat> goodness, if a graph is increasing, what does that mean about its derivative? It's positive, okay? So that means that the derivative of the first derivative is positive. What's the derivative of the first derivative? The second derivative. Okay, so where f is concave down, the first derivative is decreasing. Okay, here's the bread and butter of what we're going to talk about. A test for concavity. If the second derivative is greater than zero, if something is greater than zero, what kind of number is it? Positive. So second derivative, positive. On some interval, that just means on some stretch of the graph, then the original graph of f is concave up. Now, concave up looks like this. So if we can find the second derivative and it is positive, then that tells us the original graph is shaped like that. If the second derivative is less than zero, so second derivative is negative, then the original graph is concave down, and concave down looks like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is put together this first and second derivative idea, and I'm going to make a little chart I'm going to make the chart right here. Okay, so I'm going to make a little box. Uh, looks like this. And I'm going to put F prime positive, F prime negative, F double prime positive, F double prime, negative. Okay. Now, if our first derivative is positive, what does that mean about the graph? The original graph is going uphill. It is increasing. If our first derivative is negative, then what that means about the original graph is that it was decreasing. We've talked about that. 
Today we're going to introduce this concavity portion here that we just mentioned below. If the second derivative is positive, then our graph is concave up. And if our second derivative is negative, that tells us the original graph is concave down. Okay, so what I want you to do is picture this. What does our graph look like if it's increasing and concave up? What would something look like if it increased and was concave up? Can you wave in the air what that would look like? It could be to the right of where the slope is zero. But just think, okay, your graph is going uphill, but it's concave up. So it has to be like that. Okay. Yeah, no, not a, yeah, not a trick question. So it's going uphill and it's concave up. This? Yes. No, not that I know of. Okay, what if I'm decreasing but concave up? What would that look like? You're going downhill but concave up. Yes, you would look like that. So if I look at that, yes, it's decreasing from left to right, and it is shaped like that. Okay, well, let's do the opposite. What if I'm increasing but concave down? That means that I'm like that. What if I'm decreasing and concave down? What would that look like? Yeah, kind of like the other side of that parabola. Yeah. Okay, so those two things combined can tell us a lot about exactly how to draw an original graph, even if we don't have a function. Okay, so that's what we're going to be using next. Okay. The second derivative test for relative extrema, we've already talked about that. Now, what about if our second derivative is zero? We talked about where it's greater than zero, less than zero. If I have a place where the second derivative is zero between those two, it just means that's where the concavity changes. Now, if concavity changes, what would that look like? Let's think about a normal cubic curve. looks like that, correct? Okay, what if I covered up half of it? What kind of concavity would you say that has? Concave up or concave down? Down. What if I covered up the other half? That's concave up. Well, guess what? Somewhere right there in the middle is where the concavity changes. And that is where our second derivative would be zero. Okay, so it's, it, it's common in cubed or fifth or seventh degree functions that you actually have a change in concavity. So literally, like you can cover up half and see one concavity, cover up the other half and see the other. So it's where that concavity changes. Okay, all right, so we're going to do this next example. For the following function, find the relative extrema, that means min and max, using first and second, um, and I meant to include this, and concavity, add this for me guys, go back in and type that. So we're going to find min and max with the first derivative, and then we're going to find concavity with our second derivative. So do you remember the sign charts that I was showing you how to make? We're going to make a sign chart for the first and a sign chart for the second derivative. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to find the first derivative. First derivative is 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. Okay, I want to know where this is zero or undefined. Is that ever going to be undefined? No, I don't have x in a denominator or anything like that. So I'm really just worrying about where this is zero. 
Okay, how would you go about solving that? <coughs> First thing I would do, I think I would divide everything by 3. That would still be a 0. x squared plus 2x minus 3. Can we factor that? Let's use a little guess and check on this. So you can do the big X if you want, but this is pretty, I mean, this is about as simple as I get. So let's try this one. What two things would I multiply to get X squared? X times X. What two things would I multiply to get three? Let's not worry about the negatives yet. Just the three. Be three times one, right? So three and one. Now let's worry about the positives and negatives. If this is a negative 3, then one of these has to be plus and one has to be minus. Where do those plus and minus need to be placed so that when I FOIL it, I get a positive 2x? Plus 3 minus 1. Plus 3 minus 1. Okay, now I can set each of those factors equal to 0. And I will get x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a sign chart. Okay, negative 3 is to the left of 1. Okay, so I'm going to pick some numbers from here, here, and here, sub them back into my derivative, and I can use this simplified form of the derivative to figure out if these are positive or negative. Okay, so let's say we choose negative 4. If you plug negative 4 into both of these, does that product give you a positive or a negative? Positive. And if you have to use your calculator, which tells me that the graph is increasing. First derivative tells us increase, decrease information. Okay, something super easy in between here to use? Zero. If I sub zero into here, or you can even go back to the original one. That might be easier in this case. What do you get? A positive or a negative? A negative. It tells me the function was decreasing. Okay, if I take something to the right of 1, let's say 2, and I sub 2 into these two factors and multiply, do I get a positive or a negative? Positive, which tells me the graph is increasing. Now it doesn't have to always alternate. Remember if we have a shelf point it won't alternate, but this one did. Okay, so now I know where the graph increases, decreases. Tell me what happens at negative 3. It's an important point because it is a what? Maximum. Okay, look, the graph's going uphill. This number's here because the slope is 0 there. So I'm going uphill, I have a slope of zero, and then I go downhill. Let me just picture it. You go up, level out, go down. This is a maximum. And we'll come back in a minute and find that y value. If I'm going downhill, I level out at a slope of zero, and then go uphill, what happens at one? It's a minimum. 1 comma something. Okay, we'll worry with those in just a second. Okay, now I'm going to look at the second derivative for concavity. So second derivative, here's my first derivative. The second derivative is 6x plus 6. Back to the original first derivative, take its derivative, set it equal to 0, piece of cake, subtract 6, divide by 6, and I get x equals negative 1. Okay, I'm going to make a sign chart for the second derivative. There's only one point that I need to put on that sign chart, and that's the negative 1. I had 2 up here because I had two solutions to that equation. Okay, so let's pick a number to the left of negative 1. If I choose negative 2 and I sub it back in that second derivative, 
do I get a positive or a negative? Negative. Okay, in terms of the second derivative, that tells me it's concave down. Okay, if I pick a number to the right of negative 1, let's say 0, and I sub it in over here, then that gives me a positive. And a positive second derivative tells me we're concave up. Okay, so if this concavity changed, that tells me that I have a point of inflection. Ooh, fancy word. At negative one comma something. Okay, a point of inflection is this point right here where concavity changes. And from here on out, I'm going to call it a POI instead of writing out point of inflection. Okay, so I know that my original graph will have a maximum, a minimum, and a point where the concavity changes. Okay, so now get your calculator out because we're going to sub in these three numbers into the original function to find those y values, and then we'll be able to sketch it really, really accurately. Subbing these into the original, because I want to know what that point is on the original graph. I'll get 14 for this one. Anybody who's done that one? Negative 18 here. Tell me if you're getting anything different from what I've got. Good. <laughs> Alright, so now let's make a, an accurate graph of this function. Okay, so I will need these points, negative 3, 14, 1, negative 18, and negative 1, 2. I'm just kind of going to have to say, okay, this is, this is 14. This is negative 18. And this is negative 2. So let's plot these three order pairs that we have. I have a negative 3, 14. I have a 1. Oops, I didn't name that one. I needed that. There's 1, negative 18, and negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so marking those three order pairs, this one is my point of inflection. So this is where the concavity will change. It is not a max or a min. It's just a point of inflection. Okay, but let's look at our max and our min. To the, if this is a maximum, then that means I'm doing like this, right? And it's concave down there. So it makes sense that I would come up, come down, down like that. That is concave down, which this sign chart told me, and I am increasing to negative 3, 
decreasing until I all the way until I get to one. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to this point. But look, when I pass negative one, the graph becomes concave up. So I've got to kind of turn it like that. And then from one on, the graph is increasing. So I have my max and my min, my concave down, my concave up. Question on that. All right, let's do... Let's do a couple more, maybe, and then we'll finish up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Not yet? Okay, find the relative extrema of the function given by and sketch. Okay, so relative extrema, what's it asking for? Maxes and mins, okay, which uses the first derivative. Okay, so let's find our first derivative. 30x squared minus 30x to the 4. Will that ever be undefined? Nope, I don't have any x's in a denominator or anything weird like that. So it will equal 0 somewhere. How would I solve that equation? Factor out 30x squared. Okay, so this will be 1 minus x squared. Okay, I'm going to set 30x squared equal to 0. And I'm going to set 1 minus x squared equal to 0, setting each of those factors equal to 0. If I divide by 30, I still have a 0. And if I square root 0, what do I get? Do I need plus or minus here? Okay, this is the only number that when I square root, I don't need plus or minus. Okay, over here, I'm going to add x squared to both sides. And I'm going to square root and get what? 1 and negative 1. Because I have to do the plus or minus. Okay, so that's three different values where the derivative is 0. So I'm going to set up my sign chart. I have negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so here is my derivative. I'm either subbing them in here, or I could use the factored form. So let's say I took negative 2. And I plugged negative 2 in here and here. Would I get a positive or negative? I don't really care what I get as long as I know if it's positive or negative. This would be positive, but this would end up being negative, wouldn't it? Because if I square negative 2, that's 4, but 1 minus 4 is a negative and then times a positive. So I do end up with a negative, which tells me my graph is decreasing. Okay, oh, this is tricky. I've got to use a fraction, don't I, or a decimal. Okay, so let's use negative 0.5. You want to plug it in your calculator? Can you do it in your head? I think we might need to plug in. Tell me if you get a positive or a negative. Two people are subbing in. We're going to rely on them, everybody. Andrew, what'd you get? Um, Elizabeth, what'd you get? Positive. Elizabeth saved us all. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, what about 0.5? Go back in and edit what you did and just change it to positive. What'd you get? Positive one? It didn't change? It's still increasing? What does that mean about zero? Shelf point. 
Okay, let's go ahead and do 2 sub 2 into here or the original derivative form. And what do we get? Negative. Decreasing. Okay, so that tells me that this is a what at negative 1? Follow the flow of the graph. It's a minimum, isn't it? This was our shelf point, and this is a maximum. All right. Um, let's see. The original function is a fifth degree equation. What does a fifth degree equation look like when we graph it? Very similar to a cubic but there's a negative coefficient. So instead of going up like this, it's going to come down like that. Now, I'm going to have a little more um, happening in the middle here because I know I do have a min and a max and a shelf point. But that'll be the general shape of the curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and find these ordered pairs. Um, we want to take negative 1 and sub it back into that original. We want to take 0 and sub it back in the original. And positive 1, sub it back in the original. I'll do the 0. Okay, we'll sub in negative 1 and positive 1. Let's see what we get. Yes. Oh, yes, it will not be happy if you do that. Did you sub it negative one yet, Andrew? Good. And anybody get one's answer yet? Or positive one? Oh, try that again. I have something different. No, that should be right. I think I made a mistake on the other one. Yeah, it should be negative 4 as well. No, positive 4, yes, because it's a negative and those are odd exponents. Yes. Okay, is everybody good on that? Okay, so I'll see if we can sketch it. I'm going to need, oh, 0, 0, we got that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four. Okay, so I have a minimum at negative one, negative four, a shelf point, so I know it'll go through the shelf point, it just won't be a min or max, and then one, four will be a maximum. Is that enough to tell you what it's going to look like? I'm decreasing, and I hit this minimum. Okay, well, I'm decreasing, hit that min. Then I'm increasing, but still increasing. And then I hit this max. Okay, so how am I going to increase through there, keep increasing? It's going to increase and then flip like that. And it probably should look a little bit more like a shelf point than that does. But there we go. Question on that one. All righty. Let's see. Okay, let's hold off on examples 2, 3, and 4 for tomorrow, since we're getting a little close to time. Um, if you'll flip the page, that's just showing you that inflection point again. That is where your concavity changes. Oh, I didn't realize I put that chart here. Okay, we can transfer that or just stick with the first one that we did on the first page. Um, we've talked about, about that already. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to leave the page at example two. 
We will pick up there tomorrow. You have four problems for me. One, three, five, and seven on page 217 to find max min's points of inflection. Okay? And then we'll pick up with the rest tomorrow. Any questions? Yes, I did. Thank you.